This is CNN Breaking News. And let's begin with the breaking news. The second day of Donald Trump's hush money trial wrapping up just a little while ago. The proceedings gaining momentum today with seven jurors seated after an afternoon of intense questioning. CNN's Kara Scannell has details from just outside the courthouse in New York. Kara, give us the latest. Well, just moments ago, a seventh juror was seated in this trial. He's a male. He's a civil litigator. And he said he had some views about Trump during his presidency. He said likely he didn't agree with him, but he said he could be fair and partial this coming after another full day of jury selection, where there are now seven jurors seated in this case. It's this very, like, massive sense of, of gravitas and importance because you, you know that this is history in the making. Dozens more potential jurors filed into a Manhattan courtroom Tuesday, and six jurors were seated as jury selection continued into day two of the first criminal trial of a former president. The seated jurors include an Irishman in sales, a female oncology nurse, a corporate male lawyer, an English teacher at a charter school, a software engineer, and an owner of an IT business. The jury selection strategy for both parties taking shape. Trump attorneys spending the afternoon digging into the social media post of some potential jurors. Two were struck for cause. One for a social media post referencing Trump and, quote, lock him up. When a prosecutor asked the juror if he still believes Trump should be locked up, the juror answered no. Trump was seen craning his neck toward him and flashing a smirk. Judge Juan Mershon issued a stern warning to Trump after he visibly reacted to a juror's answers about a video she posted on social media. He warned Trump's lawyer, your client was audibly uttering, I will not have any jurors intimidated in the courtroom. That juror was questioned outside the presence of the others about a video she posted on social media showing an outdoor celebration, quote, spreading the honking cheer around Election Day 2020. She said it was a New York celebratory moment. Trump's lawyer suggested she was biased. The judge said he believed the juror could be fair and didn't excuse her. Trump's attorney Todd Blanche telling those in the jury pool, quote, it's extraordinarily important to President Trump that we know we're going to get a fair shake. One juror said he finds Trump fascinating because he, quote, walks into a room and he sets people off one way or the other. Blanche seemed amused with the response. Another juror said she learned for the first time Tuesday that Trump has been charged in three other cases. Prosecutor Joshua Steinglass addressed prospective jurors, asking them to set aside any strong feelings. He asked each to consider if they would be able to look defendant Trump in the eye and return a guilty verdict if the case is proven beyond a reasonable doubt. Trump appeared to look at the jurors, tilting his head once or twice as they were answering yes, according to pool reports. One juror who was excused after she said she had a scheduling conflict described her experience to CNN. At the same time, you, you walk into the courtroom and you see Trump sitting there. I had never seen him in person before. You see him sitting there and it's like, oh, it's just a guy. Well, so now that there are seven jurors selected out of the initial pool of 96, on Thursday morning, 96 new jurors will come in. They've already been sworn in. We'll start this process all over again, going through the 42 questions that are in that questionnaire, then questions by the attorneys, and then they'll strike until we have 12 jurors and a number of alternates. Wolf. All right, Kara Scannell in New York for us. Kara, thank you very much. Let's dig deeper right now on the seven jurors who have now been sworn in. Uh, our senior legal analyst, Ellie Honig, is with me over here at the Magic Well. Ellie, what do we know about these jurors? Yeah, well, jury selection, it's a fascinating exercise, and it's really more art than science. You're trying to read human beings, inherently dynamic and unpredictable. But we've learned some really important, I think, potentially revealing details about these seven jurors. These jurors will be on the case. So far, we know four males, three females. Let's take a quick look at what we have for juror number one. Juror number one will be the four person. No magic powers associated with the four person. That's the person who generally communicates on behalf of the jury with the judge and tends to lead the deliberations in the room. What jumped out at me, this nothing remarkable in the bio, but this is a person who said he watches both Fox News and MSNBC. That's an interesting combination. If I'm Trump and I got anyone who watches any Fox News, I want a chance that that person's gonna go on the jury. But I have to note this, in New York, I pick juries in New York, people sometimes confuse Fox News with the local Fox 5. And the jury form does not separate those two. So it could be that he was actually talking about the local news, which is really not partisan. Let's go to juror number two. Juror number two is an 
nurse. In New York, you get a lot of medical professionals, a lot of hospitals there. In my experience, medical professionals tend to be technical. They're capable of separating facts from emotion. And really, prosecutors want that. It really depends in how strongly you feel that your case is based when you get down to the technical elements of it. So you're always going to have nurses, doctors, medical professionals. A native New Yorker watches CNN. That's good to see. Juror number three. Okay, juror number three. Now, this is interesting. Well, this is a lawyer. And typically, the rule of thumb is lawyers don't like lawyers on their juries. At the prosecutor's office, we almost automatically got rid of any lawyer. But it's also hard to do because you do have a lot of lawyers in Manhattan. Uh, the concern is that a lawyer might just take over the jury. They might say, listen, I'm a lawyer. Forget about the judge. I know what's going to happen here. But it's hard to see the jury with no lawyers on it. Interestingly, he does read the Wall Street Journal, which has been quite critical of this particular case in its editorial pages. So juror number three, I think, would please me from Trump's point of view. Let's go to juror number four. Juror num number four is an older man. He's a businessman. He's a family man. He says he finds Trump fascinating and mysterious. That would worry me if I was with the DA's office. I don't want someone who's enamored with Trump or finds any sort of fascination or mystery in him. But again, he doesn't seem to have very strong political views for or against Donald Trump. Let's go to uh, the number five. Number five is a young African-American. This is a teacher, a highly educated woman. Uh, she said she does not, did not know that Trump is facing charges in other criminal cases. She knows now. Teachers are another interesting one. Teachers sort of cut both ways because on the one hand, teachers know how to say no, right? They know how to tell their students, no, you can't do that. On the other hand, teachers are interested in rehabilitation, giving people a second chance. So as a prosecutor, we were always sort of mixed about teachers. So again, this one I think strikes me as a fair juror. I don't think either side's going to be delighted or overly upset with juror number five. Let's go to juror number six here. Juror number six is a software engineer, uh, a young person, a recent college grad. Software engineer, similar to the oncology nurse, I think this is a person whose profession requires her to be analytical, to separate out emotion. And again, usually prosecutors like that. By the way, gets news from New York Times. I know there's this notion the New York Times is liberal. In New York, everyone gets their, everyone gets their news from the New York Times, so I don't read too much into that. And now we have juror number seven. Not sure if we have a graphic. This just happened. Juror number seven, Wolf, is another lawyer, a second lawyer. Now we have two lawyers, a litigator, a civil litigator, so someone who knows his way around the courtroom. So we have a really interesting jury here. Some of what happened here breaks the normal rules, the normal mold for what you want to do when you're picking a jury. My assessment so far is there are certain indicators about these jurors that I would like from Trump's side. There's other indicators I would like from the DA side. But I have to say, I have to hand it to the judge and the parties here, it seems that these seven jurors, based on what we know, are fair and capable of doing exactly what their oath will require them to do, which is to judge this case based on the facts and not based on emotion or politics.